good evening to all of you when i enter the supreme court a uh, gush of memories because i was born here since that right from the first day of practice i have been here only and so when i was asked to come and speak for this lecture series and that too on practice and procedure i had to accept it because this is my what you call as in the profession my janmabhumi and my karmabhumi as as an on record 19 years as an on record here now uh, i'm told this is a part of a lecture series for uh, for a base for the examination for the on record and that uh, so when this topic which is of practice and procedure so first of all i would like to say, say that uh, this topic is just not examination based but this is actually the heart of supreme court practice what we do in this court is practice and procedure because this topic deals with a the jurisdiction of the court and b how do you approach the court when you invoke the jurisdiction of the court and that's why it's divided into these two parts so this when you say practice means what that when somebody comes to you for an advice as to i want to come to supreme court you have to first see whether you can come to supreme court at all or not which is a practice part and then when you decide to approach the court the format in which you approach the court and what is the internal mechanism of the supreme court is the procedure part so when you come to the practice part of it all of us know that uh, supreme court would be covered in the union judiciary which is chapter 4 of the constitution of india now when someone comes to the supreme court what are the first the jurisdiction of the court the first is article 32 as you all of us know now article 32 all of us know is a part of part 3 it is for protection of fundamental rights it is what you call as when we say for the examination purpose it's central on the pva which is uh, first given in uh, vg rao sudamata so vg rao it is a fundamental right in itself which is k kochunni then uh, it is available against a state for the violation of the fundamental rights now fundamental rights are given in chapter 3 i don't have to elaborate on on the various rights basically five types of rights which is mandamus which is failure of a duty of the state and especially of the state so you call upon the instrumentality to first of all there has to be a duty there is a failure to perform the duty you remind them to perform the duty and still they don't do it you come to the court with a petition under article 32 that's a mandamus very pithy report shashrari is of course when an inferior authority or a tribunal does not exercise its jurisdiction vested in it exercises jurisdiction not vested in it or uh, there is something patent illegality or irregularity which is a social error mandamus of course when a person is deprived of his liberty by the state and that's the only writ we all know is applicable against even <coughs> non state co warranto is when a person holds an office without having the qualifications and prohibition is actually a negative right forbearing an authority from doing something which is the co warranto whenever uh, we file a 32 in the supreme court the first question which any court will ask you is uh, why have you come here why not go to the high court so that for the first answer which all of us need to have is by the supreme court why not the high court number one number two 
that if there is an alternate <coughs> remedy available to you under the statute why have you not invoked the alternate remedy and uh, of course that when normally in r32 you do not <coughs> interfere in policy decisions that's one more uh, aspect under 32 uh now cause pure question of facts people do the high court the supreme court doesn't interfere uh supreme court has expanded the question that uh, it also grants compensation if there's a liberty uh, if the if the liberty is taken away nirabati roy bahar i don't know tell all those decisions or uh, rudul shah uh, if it is a pure then they have the the breach was that normally in matter of contracts whether uh, 32 can be invoked answer was yes uh, shri lekha vidyarthi was the was the breaking point where they said even purely in matters of contract you can invoke uh, a writ jurisdiction if the act is so unreasonable and that it is a duty of the state to act uh, in conformity of article 14 uh, even in matters of pure contractual law this is by and large when the person approaches uh, a petition under uh, the supreme court under 32 this is the this is the practice aspect of it the second dimension of 32 is the public interest litigation all of us know that uh, pil started as a voice for the voiceless uh, where the principles of locus standi was relaxed classic cases sp gupta where uh, lawyers were permitted of course the court in cases of transfer uh, bandhwa mukti morcha where no format was prescribed where under a letter petition it was given khusena ra khatoon so these are all cases where a person or a class of persons are not in a position to approach the court then even a person who can can be permitted to represent their rights by filing a petition which you call as a public interest litigation the the next aspect of 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 this uh, of this is that the pil is now being abused uh, if you remember that balvinder singh chofail judgment of uh, justice dalveer bhandari where the appointment of an advocate general for the state of uttarakhand was challenged and the supreme court has laid down the parameters as to how the high courts must entertain uh, entertain public interest litigation the other facet of uh, pil is where uh, there is a vacuum in law the classic example being of vishakha where uh, harassment uh, in public places where there is no uh, law uh, that was there and, and supreme court laid down the uh, the guidelines and directing states to formulate legislations to fill in that similarly prakash singh uh, regarding uh, appointment to the top position in the police as to uh, to insulate the police from administration so wherever the supreme court feels that there is a vacuum and that you require some kind of a legislation because the courts cannot legislate they lay down the guidelines which is in the public interest litigation invoking the powers under 142 which will come later and uh, the guidelines laid down and direct the state governments to fall in line to frame rules in order to ensure that it falls within the guidelines of the of the supreme court of course there are also judgments where supreme court has frowned uh, on the uh, on the abuse of pil there's in purawala is another judgment where is a uh, where uh, judgment has where the supreme court has frowned on the abuse in calling it as public interest publicity interest litigation and so on and so forth so this is one more aspect where you will have to read now when you come down uh, to the uh, to the union judiciary uh, the first of the articles which becomes important is article 129 which is the supreme court is a court of record having the powers to punish for itself now the words power for itself has uh, common interpretation by just kuldeep singh in delhi judicial service association uh, it's a 91 supreme court judgment where a magistrate from gujarat was handcuffed and a petition was filed and there the question was that if it can punish for contempt only for itself can you take for uh, 
punishment for some judicial authority which is not in the Supreme Court? The answer was yes, itself would include the entire hierarchy, which is also given in V.C. Mishra's uh, case. Our, uh, V.C. Mishra, where uh, the lawyer was taken out of the roles, that, that portion was overruled in uh, the SCORA judgment, wherein uh, the powers of 142 was curbed to the extent that it cannot go beyond the statute. Uh, another class example for uh, 129 would be Justice Karnan's case, where uh, Justice Karnan <coughs> in the High Court had issued uh, notices to the Supreme Court and where they waited for him to retire and then initiated uh, uh, action against the judge after his retirement. After 129, we come to 131. I am rushing fast because it is a huge, uh, it is a notion that is why I would like to cover as much as possible. I am just giving you a base so that you can start working on it. Now 131 is the original jurisdiction of the, uh, of the Supreme Court. Uh, please mind Article 262.2 of the Constitution of India, wherein river disputes has been taken out of, out of the ambit of 131. So, 131 is the organization of the Supreme Court which deals with disputes between, cent, uh, between the center and state or states, between state or states. Uh, there, of course, the only uh, aspect which you have to remember is that it has to be only state and no other party other than state. So, even if it is an authority which is not a state government, you cannot file a suit. Uh, against uh, the against that state government, uh, the <coughs> classic examples of uh, state disputes are the boundary disputes or uh, disputes which arise during the state organization act. For example, in Bihar and Jharkhand, Madhya Pradesh and Chhattisgarh, the suits pending here, or the boundary disputes of uh, Assam and Meghalaya, that's also pending here. So therefore between two states or uh, between the central government and the state government. Yeah, there is a classic case uh, which we had filed, of course, I was very scared, was uh, the power of the state government to file a 131 suit to restrain appointment of a governor, uh, whether uh, if the Sarkaria Commission on, on center state relationship, if, if that is bro broken, whether a suit can be filed or not. The suit was definitely entertained, but let's see what happens on that. On that suit. Then after 131, uh, you have 132. 132 <coughs> is uh, appeal to the Supreme Court directly on a certificate. Certificate is under 134A, and that is only on a ground of a question which involves a substantial question of law of the interpretation of the Constitution, be it a civil or a criminal case. So, difference between 130, uh, 132, 133 and 134 is 132 is only primarily for questions of law involving interpretation of constitution. 133 is substantial question of general importance. So, the difference between 32 and 33, 33 in civil is for general importance or the opinion of the high court that it should be decided by the supreme court. Whereas, in 132 it has to be a question regarding interpretation of the constitution and 134 is the same thing as far as the appellate jurisdiction of the uh, criminal cases are concerned uh, which is uh, uh, where uh, there is a reversal of an order of acquittal and sentence to death or where the high court has withdrawn the case from the trial court and has brought to itself uh, and has convicted the person and sentenced him to death. Of course, in this case, there is uh, also the Enlargement Act, which the uh, Supreme Court, uh, which has uh, which has been made, that is the Supreme Court Enlargement of Jurisdiction Act 1970, uh, which is uh, under, I think, 138, uh, the the Act has been framed, where there uh, for where there is a reversal uh, of uh, of acquittal to a conviction for over seven years, you can approach the Supreme Court under this Act. And approach the Supreme Court directly, and then of course the uh, the the bread and butter of an advocate record, which is 136, 136, yeah. which is a purely a discretionary body. Supreme Court may, under its discretion, grant special leave to appeal. So 
there of course it does not specify it should be a high court it could be from any court any tribunal barring 162 which is the army uh, bharat bank is the classic example where from industrial tribunal itself we will uh, uh, nslp was made so it's purely discretionary supreme court is not a court of correction uh, it when when there is an alternate remedy available Uh, the Supreme Court asks you to approach alternate remedy rather than coming to it uh, itself. Concurrent findings of fact. The Supreme Court doesn't interfere. And I will tell you are every day in Supreme Court. All the grounds in which the file comes throwing at your flying at your face are all the grounds on which one thirty six is not entertained. And uh, as I said, concurrent findings of fact, whether it's a civil case or uh, uh, convicted in by three forums, why should I interfere? Uh, the, then uh, uh, one more important aspect is that hypothetical questions are not decided by the Supreme Court in one thirty six or in thirty two. Uh, in uh, of course for one thirty six you don't have to be a party to the proceedings. Even a person which is who's not a party to the proceedings can approach one thirty six. Another aspect is that uh, even though you would have given undertakings in the trial court. Uh, or in the high court that is also not a bar for you to approach the supreme court under 136 for the only reason that 136 is a constitutional remedy and an undertaking given by you uh, does not uh, bar a 136 uh, when uh, the limitation for 136 all of us know is given under article 133 of the limitation act which is 90 days and uh, of course one more thing you have to remember is that when you apply for a certificate uh, under 132 133 134 it is 60 days whether it's regardless certificate is granted or certificate is not granted in the same juncture please remember that while approaching under 129 of the contempt of uh, under 129 there also the question is that the limitation under the contempt of courts <coughs> act is attracted and You have to file your contempt within the period prescribed by the contempt of court. Because a question arose that uh, Article 129 and Article 215 being for Supreme Court or the High Court being a court of record, then could it be <coughs> circum? Could the uh, could the power be circumscribed by a act which is a creature of the Constitution? Uh, the in Pallav State's judgment, the Supreme Court took a decision. That uh, even though it might be constitutional power, but it is hedged by the limitation given under the uh, under the law of limitation under the limitation prescribed under the uh, contempt of court act. Then you have one thirty seven, which is the power to review. One thirty seven is read with order forty seven of the Supreme Court rules. So the grounds of review. Or uh, the same thing, which is which order forty seven prescribes, which is order forty seven of the CPC. Earlier, the order was different. <coughs> After the two thousand thirteen amendment, the it has now fallen in line. The reasons for review, of course, is error apparent on the face of the record, which is given in CPC, but not applicable to a criminal case because there cannot be an error apparent on the face of record in in, in the criminal case. Uh, The or uh, order forty seven, I think rule two prescribes that it should it is done only by circulation uh, in the chambers. That was challenged, and the virus has been upheld by the Supreme Court. So this is Naganatha Yaras versus something. Uh, then, of course, we've already touched one thirty eight, which is the Criminal Enlargement Act. Then is one thirty nine capital A. One thirteen capital A is the transfer jurisdiction of the Supreme Court, where two questions or similar questions arise in two different courts, or one the same question arises in the Supreme Court and in the High Court. Then, the you can move for a transfer petition under one thirty nine A, where the Supreme Court may decide to transfer the matter to itself, or if the matter between two courts, then it can decide to transfer the matter to one of the High Courts for a decision in the matter. Primarily to avoid conflicting orders of two different uh, uh, two, 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 two different high courts. One forty one law laid down by the Supreme Court uh, is binding on all courts, 
and uh, 142, of course, which is the, I call it the Brahmastra of the Supreme Court, where the Supreme Court may pass any order as is necessary for doing uh, complete justice, which is normally what we tell that the Supreme Court can can do anything what it wants. It makes it the most powerful Supreme Court in the entire country. Such, such powers of 142 not available in most of the Supreme Courts uh, in the country. Uh, the question arose as to whether uh, it can go beyond the contours of law. Uh, when the same question arose in V.C. Mishra's case, in V.C. Mishra where the Supreme Court took away the license of the lawyer concerned, the SAORA judgment uh, takes a stand that no, you cannot uh, take away the statute and the Supreme Court by 142 cannot go behind the statute or cannot break the or violate the statute while passing, uh, passing such orders. Along with uh, 131A is the other facet of transfer of the Supreme Court, which is of course the 25 and uh, the 406 uh, CRPC, 25 being for the civil uh, cases and 406 being for the criminal cases. Uh, the convenience of parties was is normally what is seen. Uh, Section 10 CPC is also a very important guiding factor as far as the criminal case, uh, civil cases are concerned. In a criminal case, normally uh, the Supreme Court does not uh, does not transfer because that amount should transfer the investigating agency. However, when Supreme Court has found <laughs> that the investigation can't be conducted properly or the atmosphere in that place is so hostile that uh, justice cannot be granted. Class examples of Jailalta, DP Yadav, where the uh, trial has been shifted, the investigation has been shifted from uh, from one uh, state to the uh, to the other state. Uh, the certificate, uh, the then Article One Forty Five, Supreme Court rules is made has been uh, made under the powers uh, conferred under Article One Forty Five and uh, Article One Forty Three which is the power of the president to consult the supreme court where all the references are made the, it is up to the supreme court to answer the reference or not answer the reference if there can be a case supreme court might refuse to answer saying that this question doesn't arise for us so normally the supreme the president takes an opinion uh, from the from the president to see whether a question has to be answered or not uh, one more aspect under uh, 137 would be uh, 137 would be the question of merger, uh, which is as to when a when the Supreme Court dismisses a special petition by complete non-speaking order, whether a review is maintainable or not. Kony Ahmed initially said that uh, review is maintainable because the doctrine of merger doesn't apply for the reason that. 136 is Supreme Court means it's discretion grant special appeal. So a refusal to exercise discretion is not affirmation of the order of the court from where the SLP arises on the merits of the case and therefore the doctrine of merger does not apply and therefore you have a right to, appear, to approach the same court by filing a review. Uh, that point was doubted and in Code Districts the, the question has been settled wherein uh, the Supreme Court said that yes dismissal of an SLP does not <coughs> bar a person from approaching the court below uh, by filing a review. The only uh, precaution which a lawyer has to take is when he takes, when he withdraws with liberty to file a review, please take the liberty, uh, the, uh, please maintain the liberty to file the review even against the parent judgment. And uh, that was Justice, uh, I think Deepak Mishra's uh, uh, Deepak Mishra's judgment in 2017 wherein uh, a person who had not sought liberty to file an SLP against the parent judgment, then they said you can't maintain a review only, uh, an SLP only against a review judgment because an SLP only against the review judgment is not maintained. A review is only a refusal of a high court to review its own judgment against which an SLP might not be, uh, might not, should not be entertained. However, if the review is allowed, obviously the merger applies and the parent judgment gets merged in the review judgment against which an SLP is maintainable. 
uh, then the uh, while uh, filing a a case uh, the appeal which is now pending there are various appeals which have been filed which are maintainable in, in these in the supreme court against different in uh, in different statutes consumer protection act act uh, uh, electricity act then your uh, companies act then your special court transaction securities act now the only thing when uh, as for the examination purpose is concerned or even for practice purpose is concerned you have to look into the scope of the appeal because certain appeals are limited into pure substantial questions of law certain appeals are on both law and facts for example an appeal under the consumer protection act is both a question on law and facts uh, but uh, under the electricity act it's only on pure substantial questions of law so you uh, while uh, preparing an appeal under the various statutes the scope and ambit of the appellate uh, section has to be taken into account uh, the other aspect is that if the time is prescribed in for filing the appeal under the statute and uh, then the appeal has to be filed within the time prescribed under the statute and if there is an outer limit prescribed then the limitation act would not <laughs> apply in such cases the power to condone delay is taken away and an appeal is uh, and and uh, delay, for example under the electricity act if the appeal the time to file an appeal is prescribed and says so and so time and not thereafter then uh, there is no power even to uh, even to condone uh, the uh, delay uh, as far as uh, as far as the, the, that appeal is concerned yes so this is the broad uh, contour of uh, ah the last is of course the challenge to the elections of the president and vice president uh, which again directly an appeal lies to the the supreme court so this is by and large the 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 birds eye view of the contour of the of the aspect of the jurisdiction of the supreme court wherein you can approach the supreme court under the various provisions uh, then uh, is of course that when you when you have identified the 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 jurisdiction to be approached how do you approach it that is given in the procedure as we said that the procedure uh, is under the powers conferred under the constitution itself the uh, the supreme court rules i would say is probably one of the most most precise and most concise uh, uh, procedural rules uh, much more easier than the uh, than the cpc i think there is nothing which is absent in the in the supreme court rules uh, which for which you have to look into an answer in any other uh, in any other procedure uh, as far as the exams are concerned uh, order 4 which defines who is an advocate an advocate in record the next is order 5 which is very important as far as the practice a procedure is concerned order 5 has got two parts where uh, business is done in the chambers of the registrar and where the applications comes before a single judge of the court we will call as the judge in chambers you have there is no other way but to memorize all the uh, <laughs> provisions which are there for order 5 rule 1 and rule 2 which used to be order 6 when we uh, when we were when we were advocate and records Uh, the only thing is then uh, an appeal lies against an order of a registrar in chambers uh, to a registrar to a judge in chambers uh, the a few more uh, see uh, some more uh, uh, the 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 jurisdiction of a judge s- sitting in chambers and there are a few more aspects were increased by an amendment in 2019 where certain uh, applications were sent to a judge sitting in chamber for example transfer petitions which were initially in uh, in good old days used to come for the first time before a court they are now coming before a judge in chambers at least square the admission stage uh, if, uh there you can look into that uh, that uh, regular that uh, rule which has now come uh, to see which are all the enlarged uh, which are all 
where all the judges in chamber now uh, taking those applications i distinctly remember that uh, a transfer petition uh, was initially before a before a bench then uh, you order 16 is appeals out of which order 19 is the certificate the entire procedure under a certificate given by the high court order 21 which is the heart of our practice which is the slp all of us know form 28 now if you read order 21 carefully order 21 actually gives you everything what is required for firing an slp order 21 lays down a what are the necessary documents to file this order 21 lays down if you don't have the documents what will you do order 21 even lays down how will you write your index order 21 lays down after you file an slp what should be done so order 21 for sl for civil and order 22 for slp criminal any practicing advocate in the supreme court must know 21 and 22 and if you know 21 and 22 properly take it from me you will have a defectless filing most of the mistakes we do while filing is basically because we do not know 21 and 22 properly if you read 21 properly in uh, for a, for a, for a new advocate record if he reads 21 every time he does a filing by the 15th filing he will know exactly what all is required for filing and 21 if you read 21 it will include caveat which is order 15 you will you will see in order 15 rule 2 is caveat so order 21 will say if a caveat is there what is to be done it also says order 21 will say how many uh how many pay, how many paper books we filed now uh, before 2013 we used to file 1 plus 3 now suddenly we find start filing bulky slps in the registry said it's too much for us to handle and so 2013 amendment took place wherein they said file only one get your defects cured and then <coughs> file three so 21 that way is actually if you read 21 properly i don't think you will make a mistake while while uh, filing then 21 22 then of course then you have the various provisions for uh, uh, the appeals under under various statutes the uh, the other the other important uh, article would be 47 which is the uh, 47 which is the review petition 48 which is the curative petition a uh, curative petition which of course all of us know came by uh, rupa hurra was ashok hurra uh, only two grounds given in the curative petition one being the fact that the judge is interested in the case and number two that a person to whom notice has not been served and uh, and and the judgment has been passed against him and even after filing a review he has not been uh, heard and the and and that's that's a ground for curative order 38 lays down how a curative to be filed what is the nature of certificate to be filed how a curative is placed again by circulation by the very same judges who have heard the matter if possible 38 is something which has been introduced which is which does not find its place in any of the constitutional or the uh, legal provisions but is something which is introduced by the supreme court rules itself making it a jurisdiction to uh, to approach uh, the, the 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 supreme court uh, then uh, uh, the order 46 deals with uh, the election to president and vice president while uh, order 39 or order 40 and 41 dealing with transfer petition to the supreme court because what i'm saying is that when the, the, these are things which you which you have to read because unless you don't read it's there's there's no law in it it's purely procedural so this i think is the 
is what I can say a complete bird's eye view of from the examination point of view as to what to expect in the case. Thank you.